Lady Ada is a time it's new product. Do 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 do. New products. Okay. Um, first up, we have some new Ninja Flex uh, Semi Flex. This is no, this is Ninja Flex. Regular Ninja Flex, no, a no, new no. color. Sorry. Yes. Um, we have caramel. Yeah. And then we have um, blush, and we have uh, I think almond. Although we th we thought it was more like an almond peach smoothie. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these are kind of like tan colors. Um, they're very beautiful, and um, they're the super flexible. And they're kind of like a like skin color. Um, you can maybe use them to make like, I don't yeah, know, sure. like dolls or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, kind of weird. But uh, we have. It's gonna been, get weird. We think it weird. We have uh, black and uh, white already, and now we have these kind of like uh, peachy colors, um, in three millimeter and one point seven five millimeter. So uh, the three millimeter is a is more material, so it's more expensive it, because yeah. it's a, I think it's like the same length, so it's um, point seven five kilograms instead of half a kilogram. So that's why it's a little more expensive. So check your uh, printer to determine uh, which you can use. Remember, uh, you cannot use Bowdoin Drive. So just make sure that um, we have a suggestions for which ones can use the yeah. flexible filaments. Works great with like replicators, printer bot simples, yep. TAS bots, and, and you know with the the tweak and others like that. But uh, just make sure you look it up because it's super flexible, and some extruders don't like it. Okay. Next up, we got a couple of books. The first one is <coughs> Raspberry Pi. User guide, third yes. edition, and this is updated for the model B plus four. Okay, which means it's going to be updated really soon for the Pi two. Right. But since the Pi two and the B plus are very similar in, in terms of shape and software and capabilities, the Pi two is just faster. Um, I, yeah. You know, this is still a really good guide. I would suggest getting it if you're getting a Pi two. Yeah. So Pi two or B plus, both are very good. Updated. This is one of our most popular books. Edmund did an excellent job, and of course, like it's all his fault. Yeah. So he does a good job writing about it because yeah. <laughs> he uh, he just knows everything because it's all his fault. Okay, next up, um, this book we picked up. So this is from the same uh, publishing company that's doing the Art of Electronics uh, third edition, and they made this suggestion. It's a really good book um, if you wanted to know about the history of computing. Um, in a very good way. Um, highly it's recommended. Photos and yeah. transistors it, and pictures of guys in a plaid shirt <laughs> with yeah, really thick rimmed glasses. Yeah. And beards. So um, this is a good gift for yourself or for someone, and we thought we would stock it, so it's in there. Next up, there is a new version of Coder, and Coder is a great way to learn how to program using a Raspberry Pi. This is a Google project, and we worked with Google to make a pack. And this is a new coder pack. Mm -hmm. And the thing that matters the most, of course, is you SD get this card. card with coder on there. So if you're trying to learn how to do programming, especially um, JavaScript, which is which is kind of yeah. HTML, JavaScript, with CSS. So the Pi Two, it's even faster and even better. And uh, so we just upgraded the pack because we, you know, it's especially when you're doing over the web JavaScript programming, it's good to have a fast uh, server. Yeah. Um, and I'll say this: the what? the coder. The, the coder thing was always fine on the B+. Plus. It is awesome on the Pi 2 B. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, it is, it is, okay. it is, it is, because the B, we were talking about this today, the, the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B is definitely more like a little computer. Yeah. The performance is really good. No, it's good. like, it's like, a, yeah. it's like, a, it's just faster than a netbook. Yeah. It's, it's a quad core processor. I mean, like, it's, it's yeah. zoom in. So it's coder, definitely, it's as fast as a tablet. Yeah, so coder's more. updated, and go get it if you want to learn. Next up. We have the 4 millimeter 32 by 64 matrix. All the other matrices that came in um, were correct. And this one, we had a little bit of a uh, back and forth with the factory because uh, it wasn't quite what we wanted. But then uh, they fixed it up. And now we have this beautiful display. I'm, I'm driving it here with a mega. Um, I'll just hold it up because on the overhead, it's a little bit too. Yeah, well, you can try, the try the overhead. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, it's really bright. Um, but you That's get beautiful. 32 by uh, 64 LEDs. And uh, you can use our RGB matrix library. Works with uh, Raspberry Pi. We have a library, and even we have a hat even that works quite well. And uh, you can also use it with a Mega. I've got a, a, a Mega down here, and I've soldered it to the Mega. And then you plug into the input port here, and then you just have to uh, pulse the data very, very fast. And uh, I mean, it's just a beautiful display. These are used for like walls and stuff. And this fine pitch means you can get a lot of pixels in. Okay. We even have a, we also have a three millimeter, a five millimeter, and a six millimeter, and the prices vary because of the PCB size and density. So uh, you know, figure out how big you want this thing, and then you can buy the matrix that matches. Okay. Next up, I'm really excited about this. We've got the Crate Two. It is iRobot's robotic platform. 
Um, this is a big deal, and I'm just going to show a couple photos, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me just move stuff out of the yeah, way. Yeah. So, you talk about it. Yeah, okay. here's the photos. So they did a create a long time ago, and um, they stopped. And it was one of the things that I was a little sad about because one of the problems with robotics is you spend all of your time trying to move things around and you try to have motors work, you try to have battery, and wouldn't it be great if there was something somewhere that someone just got working and it always worked? Well, the iRobot Roomba is that thing. Um, they've been selling, I believe, millions of the iRobot and so what you get is a... Is um, this, but yeah. then you can pull this up. Yeah. And I'll do that right now. Yeah, and so you can drill holes through this and everything, but there's a hack port, basically. Well, there's and, a hack port. See and, that port? Yeah. That's and, the hacker port. And here's the other cool thing. These are made from refurbished Roombas, so this stuff is ending up in the landfill. It goes and gets tested, uh, fixed, improved, parts uh, get exchanged, and you have a fully functional robot that you can completely control. It comes with a cable and comes with basically all the yeah, things you need. Yeah, and it has this open area, so you can like um, you can like put your electronics in here, and there's like you can you can basically shove it underneath. And yeah. it has uh, really good grippy motors with tons of torque. It's got this little uh, yeah spinner. Um, this would be a fantastic with, robot that would take yeah. you forever to build. It has like this this like a uh, lidar type thing going on here, yeah. and then. Um, the, it comes with a cable. Should, um, I, should I do this again? Wait, no, don't. Do, 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 I, I don't do, think do, you should. Do. I don't think you should. Button. It'll just gonna run no, off the I table. Know, but yeah. yeah, it comes with this cable, which is an FTDI to because uh, it's a serial connection to serial over here, and you can um, plug it in and you can um, send and receive commands. And there's a, basically a protocol where you can like query the uh, motors, tell it to drive, uh, you know, tell it to send you interrupts and stuff. And you can also get a cable. We don't have these in the store yet. We're working on it. But you can just get a cable. Um, there's some links online from where to get it. And you plug this in and you can control it from an Arduino because it's a 5-volt TTL. It also gives you the um, 9 volts out from the onboard battery. So you can even use it to power your thing. And they have yeah. examples for um, using it with a Raspberry Pi. You plug this into the USB port and um, just like go to town you can control yeah. your robot and it it just is it's really strong and excellent if you're like I have to build a robotic project and you don't want to like spend hours or days or weeks on batteries power supplies motor control like encoders they, like you can really they figured lose it out months before you even get something that can stably move and because it's nice and round and it's got these bump sensors it's also it's less likely to break yeah. like this is a time-tested design okay and we just have two more things then we're gonna put up for questions lady ada what is this thing okay wait hold on let me um put this yeah away. i'm just gonna show some photos of the thing okay wait oh this is plugged in whoa yep off it goes um okay but that's why I wouldn't turn on because I was getting charged. Anyways, what is this thing? Okay, this is a um, photo sensor, and you see here with a white piece of paper, and it's a reflectance sensor. It has an IR LED, and um, uh, it emits IR light off, off one side, and then it bounces off and gets detected by the photo transistor on the other side. So um, you can even see the photo, uh, uh, the IR LED here. Oh, yeah, look purple at that. light. Maybe I'll, you know, closer yeah look at that so normally it's not visible to human eyes but um when you have something about like yeah five millimeters away it detects it so it can detect um like my hand or it can detect like a piece of paper um shinier light colored things are better um because it has to bounce the light off so if you have something like wool it won't bounce the light so it won't work as well so uh flat shiny stuff's really good uh, it's just a really low cost way to do um, motion proximity. Um, something is going in front. Usually you'll have like a, maybe a servo or a motor or somebody will move something. It'll detect when a latch is opened or when something is about to hit a wall. It's also used in line detection because um, white light will bounce off. Uh, it'll bounce off of a white line much better than the black line because the black line absorbs um, yeah. the color. Uh, the IR because it's like a black absorbs the light. Um, so uh, you use encoder wheels. So it's just a, a, a very simple little sensor, um, but very popular, especially in robotics and mechatronics. And remember, you can't put your hand right up against it because then like the light isn't bouncing. You have to be about five millimeters away. So there you go. Okay. And then last up, this is a neat little uh, board that just came in that we really like. This is. MicroPython. The MicroPython. And it comes in a really beautiful case. This is uh, really interesting. This is a standalone Python uh, REPL. Um, it can, it, you can connect it via USB and it shows up like a COM port and you can start like 
typing in Python commands and, and functions and, and do stuff. And they basically took the Python runtime and compiled it onto this STM32 processor. You can also save files and um, scripts onto the micro SD card. Um, there's like ADC DAC. It's a powerful, like I think it's 100 megahertz STM32 with probably like half a mega flash or something ridiculous because these STMs always have tons of flash. But very handy if you, you know, know, know Python, you want interface with hardware. I think that was kind of interesting. We also have, a, you know, basically the Esperino, which is a JavaScript powered um, processor. And there's also, of course, the Tessel, which is also kind of like JavaScript. -y. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting to see these, uh, when you get a processor that's running at 100 megahertz and has half a megabyte of flash and maybe like a you know 100k of SRAM, you can sort of do stuff like garbage collection and like not worry about whether malloc will fail and um, like objects and and you don't have to worry so much about it, whether it's a byte or an, or a, you know int 32. You can just kind of go to town and so that makes it a lot easier to um, uh, you know implement uh, scripting. Um, languages like Python and JavaScript. I mean, I know that there's a lot of processors with Lua, which is a very lightweight scripting language, but chances are you know about Python. I remember not all libraries for Python are going to be ported. You're not going to be able to run NumPy, most likely, but uh, you know, a lot of other processes, might, uh, uh, libraries for Python may work. And uh, they also have a lot of support. Check out the uh, PyBoard website for more info. Yeah. And uh, we'll see some cool And also, a lot, of, uh, a lot of some of our favorite customers suggested it, so we knew it was a, a right thing. Yeah, this was in high demand. Yeah, and I'm so like, I'm always into, like, I, you know what? Like, I write code in C, but um, it's interesting. Like, I'm meeting, like, more people who, like, they don't know C. Like, there's web developers who, like, they, they just, they never have to learn it. And yeah. it's, like, it's kind of awesome. Like, they don't, they don't write code with pointers. And, like, I'm kind of like, yeah, I can kind of see how maybe it's time to get over it. You so get really far really fast right now without knowing C. I, and probably faster, actually. I think C like, um, keeps you down a little bit. Um, maybe we'll baggage. get a, somebody will make a Lisp uh, processor, too. I can't wait to get back to doing Scheme with hardware, although okay. Python's kind of close. Got, got lambdas in there. Okay. And with that is new products. Lady, a good job.